Good evening. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church and our online services for our candlelight service and communion on this Christmas Eve. A couple of announcements before we begin our service tonight. If you did not get one of the candles on your way in, um, please do so now so we can partake of the candlelight service. It is battery operated. You turn it on and off at the bottom. And also, we will be taking communion by these cups. If you have not received one of those, pick up, pick up one also for, the use, for those of you who are here. Uh, we have gathered here to celebrate in remembering what Christ has done for us. We celebrate his birth tonight. So in silence and listening to the prelude, let us prepare for worship. Please rise and join me in a call to worship. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. O Christ, born into the world in the fullness of time for the liberation of all creation, release all into your promised freedom. O Christ, truly God and truly human, born to a people in fulfillment of their expectations, fulfill our desires in you. You may be seated.
Please rise and join me in the prayer of adoration. Good and gracious God, on this holy night, you gave us your son, the Lord of the universe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, the savior of all, lying in a manger. On this holy night, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly host that we may sing your glory on high. Give us a place among the shepherds that we may find the one for whom we have waited, Jesus Christ, the Messiah and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, for to you is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. In seeking God's grace and saving power through Jesus Christ, let us confess our sin before God and each other. Lord, have mercy upon us. God, have mercy upon us. God of grace and truth, in Jesus Christ, you came among us as light shining in darkness. We confess that we have not welcomed the light or trusted good news to be good. We have looked for signs and wonders in our life to convince us of your presence instead of relying upon our faith. Forgive our doubt and renew our hope so that we may receive the fullness of your grace and live in the truth of Christ the Lord. Hear us now as we lift up our personal confessions in the name of the Christ child to you. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy. For unto you in the city of David is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And in his atoning sacrifices, your sins have been forgiven, and you have all been created anew. Brothers and sisters, I declare to you by the waters of your baptism that you are forgiven. May you be at peace. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. 
you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. Today we light the Christ candle. Before Jesus came, the world lay in darkness. People were far from God, not understanding his word. But then the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Jesus came to us as a light for a darkened world, and he told us that we too were to be lights for the world. As we light this Christ candle, let us remember that we are called to be the light, reflecting the greater glory of the Son of God.
We are accustomed on this evening to the singing of the hymn, Silent Night, Holy Night, when we gather for the celebration of the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. But I cannot imagine that the first verse of that hymn describes the events that were occurring at the birth of Jesus. While it was most certainly a holy night, I sincerely doubt if it was a silent night or if there was calm in the air. And yes, I do know the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds and said, Peace be unto you. But still, I wonder if there was any calm or any peace at the birth of Jesus on the night that he was born. Most of us, at one point or another, have been to a maternity ward, and most of us have experienced a childbirth. And I would ask you, as we think about this night, when you think back to your encounter into that maternity ward or a birthing room, if you encountered a silent night or gathered that all was calm, <laughs> it seems to me as if there is more of an organized chaos happening at the birth of a child. The mother is crying out in pain. The nurses or attendees are shouting encouragement to the mother. And the others who are in attendance and in spite of the discretion and privacy of the moment of the childbirth seems to bring about a crowd of people, all of whom in their excitement are making their own hoopla and noise. And to top it all off, there is the nervousness of the expectant father who is either in some remote room and back pacing back and forth or is in the birthing room with his wife receiving a barrage of hatred from her for causing this condition to be upon her. Every birth of every child has had some or all of these elements surrounding their, surrounding their birth. Silent night, all is calm. I doubt it. And the birth of Jesus was no different. Mary was deep in the pains of labor, and Joseph was frantically roaming about the small town of Bethlehem, trying to secure a place, any place, for the birth of this unintended but expected child. And the place Joseph finally secured suggests to us that there was some cleaning that had to be done, and some animals who had to be moved, probably reluctantly. Sheep were buying, cows were moving, there was probably some midwife in attendance yelling at Joseph to clean up this mess and to find some type of clean clothes or linens, whatever he'd get his hands on. And that's just the commotion that is happening in the stable here in Bethlehem on earth. I imagine even the scene in the heavenly host was somewhat excitable and electrified. After all, this was the moment God was to be born in human flesh. The angels had known about this event for a millennia of time and had spent most of the time of creation of mankind proclaiming the coming of a, man, of a Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us, to all who would hear it. And now the time is not only near, but it's here right now. Certainly this moment is to be the holiest of nights in the heavens, but definitely not a silent night. The heavenly hosts were waiting to burst forth with glory to God in the highest, anticipating and waiting for that moment to occur. The angels and the cherubim and the seraphim were all clamoring around, looking downward from their positions so they would all witness what God had said he would do in the beginning of all his created beings and become one of us, a man. And each of them had a part to do and to announce and to proclaim that the birth of Jesus and the anticipation was mounting for each of them just as it was for Mary and for Joseph amidst all the chaos and all the noise and all the clamor until. And then it happened. Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph. Jesus took his birth, first breath as a baby and the angels burst out in chorus and began to sing glory to God in the highest throughout all the kingdom. An angel appeared to the shepherds and proclaimed, I bring you good tidings for unto you just born this day a Savior. This was most definitely not a silent night or an all is calm night. This is a night of celebration, a night of joy and a time for shouting from the mountaintops. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Christ is born. Glory to be to God in the highest. Maybe it was never intended to be a silent night, but a night of joy 
and a night of celebration, and a night of hallelujahs and amens, a night of rejoicing and announcing and declaring glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to all mankind. It is my hope and my prayer tonight that each of you remember and experience the joy of what Christmas means to each of us. God is with us. May all glory and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. If you will please rise and join me in the affirmation of faith, we will use the words of the Nicene Creed you can find printed in your bulletin. What is it you believe? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust in him to share this feast, which he has prepared for all of us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Born in humility, he came to rule over all. Helpless as an infant, he showed the power of your love. Poor in things of the world, he brought the wealth of your grace. Rejected by many, he welcomed all who sought him. In his dying and rising, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this wine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to be to you a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. On this Christmas Eve, we thank you for the birth of your son, Emmanuel, God with us. Help us to never forget the gifts of hope, joy, love, and peace you have given to us. 
Heavenly Father, we pray on this night to be with those who do not know of your presence. Be with them and through our actions show others your love for them. We pray for our loved ones and family who are ill and need your healing. You know the needs of others and we put their care in your hands. We lift this prayer in the name of the one whose birth we celebrate on this night, who has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body broken for you. And in the same manner, after the meal, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed for you by the shedding of my blood. Whenever you drink from this cup, you do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the saving and dying risen Lord until he comes again for his works of his body. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Friends, if you will now take your communion cups and take the wafer side and remove the seal, the body of Christ broken for you. And now the cup side, remove the seal. The blood of Christ shed for you. Join me in the prayer after communion. We thank you, O God, that through word and sacrament you have given us your Son, who is the true bread from heaven and food of eternal life. As he is Emmanuel, God with us, strengthen us in our service that our daily living may show our thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Join me in the parting prayer. Light of the world, as we stand with candles in hand, remind us that you are the one who illumines the darkness, lighting a path for us to follow. Dwell within us and send us forth that we may carry your light into the world. Amen. Wherever you find yourself this evening with us in person, here or online, gathering with family and friends in your home, usually at this point of the service we sing joy to the world. Things are far from usual this year, and yet I still bring you good news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and you shall call him Jesus. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. In your hearts, sing out the joyful news of the birth of Jesus Christ. Be glad and know God is with you in all things. And now may the grace of God, the Father Almighty, the love of Jesus Christ, and the comfort of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.